Can you see me in here? And now we're all sealed up. <laughs> but here, I'm coming back out. Welcome to my casa. First things first, you gotta see the door. I did some like interdimensional woodwork here. You know, it's like the astral plane and the physical realm working together. Classic us. Uh, <laughs> but it opens up like a, it's a Dutch door. It's pretty cool, fancy. It also, this will level out and you can do like a little taco truck vibe. It's pretty nice. Do you want anything, Sierra? Yeah. <laughs> these are just cool ones we found at Home Depot, but I like made these and wanted to find something that fit this. And luckily this came through and it kind of worked pretty good. I kind of need to, I don't know, it, this cracked, but you know what, it works fine. I like the look, I like the character. And accidentally, there's this cross right here, which is pretty cool. I don't know if you can, can you see it? But yeah, a lot of people don't agree, but a lot of if historians will agree that the cross is a representation of the mushroom. It's based in well, Jesus is an analogy for a mushroom, and I can get into the tech, but you know, it's a long story. Google John Marco Allegro, Sacred Mushroom and the Cross. You, you guys, you know, Google's got you, Google's got you. When I got it, it was just like a utility trailer, and I, like I, like I said, I wanted to build a house. So what we did, we, we welded it out to make it a little bit wider so I could lay out fully and for the mattress, and then I put the, the walls up, and I used steel studs because this has a low, towing capacity and if you use wood studs like supports it's a lot heavier so the steel studs really made it a lot lighter so you can like like two people can pick up this house and move it around um, and it's it, it was like a blessing in disguise because I was kind of hit a wall and I was like oh shit I got both low ass towing capacity I don't know if I can make a house but it worked out real nice uh, an another cool feature is that this this pop-up I uh, I'm gonna come inside and show you from that. So, uh, I wanted to create some sort of airflow because I don't have an air conditioning unit because uh, solar, it's kind of just like a lot of wattage. So, uh, I decided to go with this little prop thing we jig. So, you have this propped open, then you have the door open, or even just the top of the door open, it creates a nice airflow. But it actually it goes down. Here, let me show you. This is my tech. Put the pillow on the head. And then coming down, watch it. Ah! I stained it just like just the regular wood color just because I was liking that OG look and I like I like the inside. I didn't want to like paint it first thing. I wanted something to come to me. But I think I might go rainbow each block a different color. You know, I just don't know how I'm not going to do that. So Next time you guys come back, this thing will be a lot more rainbowy. Uh, how, yeah. many, how many hours you put into this thing? How long did it take you from start to finish? So, so from start to finish, it took me about four months to build it. I built it during summer at my stepdad's house, and we would just work in the morning before it got hot, and then just relax. So it was a real mellow work sketch. Went on a trip in between or in, in the middle of it, but it came together, perfect timing, before that lease was up, pew, pew, hit the road. Love this. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to live on the road, out in, the na out in nature, but I had already bought this SUV, so the van life idea was kind of out of, out of the question. So I decided to get this trailer and build a house on it, because I thought it would be cool to build my own house. And luckily it worked. But it's like a, it's an eight by, five trailer I welded out uh, to an 8x6 and uh, then I just built a house on top of it. Luckily I have a stepdad who knew uh, construction and helped me along the way but yeah that's Rocco and that's Loki they live here too. They're sweet as hell <laughs> but yeah come on in here come on. <laughs> Hello, my name's Ryan, and welcome to my tiny house. It's a house that moves. 
And it's fucking awesome. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got a couple keyboards. This is the mobile keyboard. Usually I don't have this guy set up. And this is the, works great on the road. But you can also go double style. Fuck it. What should we do? <laughs> you like the doors? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's my key corner. Uh, it also doubles as a kitchen, but it's mostly a key corner. You know. Uh, but yeah, welcome, welcome over. Uh, where do we start? I'm gonna put on the, the specs. Drink a little sip. So, I built it uh, pretty minimal. This can pull out to like a full size mattress, but I'm just living solo right now in here. But the gist of the, the tour is kind of the art. I, I built it um, and didn't paint the walls at all. And then I took it on like a psychedelic pilgrimage for a couple of years. And whatever I saw, I painted on the walls. And so like, these are the mountains. This is the first thing I painted is the mountains in between uh, Phoenix and Southern California. Is down, when you drive down the 10, you'll see these mountains. That's what it represents. Thought I might as well add the blue sky because it looked like that at one time, one evening. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this is kind of, this came to me <laughs> one night where it's just, you know, this is like the astral realm and this is the physical realm. It kind of coincides with the door theme. And you know, we just gotta live in harmony. And our, our friends, the mushroom, San Pedro cactus. This is a mimosa hostilis, a high uh, DMT containing plant uh, that you can extract from. And this has mescaline on this particular cactus. But psychedelics, are the connection between uh, spirituality and logic, science, and that fun stuff. Uh, but so it's cool to be alive in 2020 where we're figuring this shit out. Psychedelic Renaissance, modern day, it's cool. Uh, what else we got? My yeah. wife made these curtains. Uh, One more time, sorry. My wife made these curtains. Uh, that's what's special about them. Cool flowers, right? Maybe I'll tie dye them or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I uh, I built it with like RV windows in case they break, so I can replace them better or easier. So that was cool. I just went to like an RV junkyard, found some windows, worked perfect. M measured them out, had a hole made by myself, I guess. <laughs> uh, usually I have lights that work, but my solar's on the fritz. <laughs> you gotta get a new solar controller. It broke. But it's really fancy when you can be out in the middle of nowhere and you just have electricity from the sun. There's 200 watts on this bad boy. More than enough. Lights, charge the iPhone. What else you, what else you need? I got a battery powered keyboard when I'm out there. <laughs> uh, under here we got a bunch of clothes, a narwhal onesie. Just, you know, the normal stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't really need much. I, uh, a lot of people always ask why I'm wearing the same clothes. And this is, I live in a really small house and I have a pair of pants that I skate in and I have a pair of pants that I wear out. And that's, and then some shirts, maybe like four or five. And that's my vibe. I like to keep it minimal. Uh, oof, come over here. These are my drawers. There's not going to be anything really exciting in them or anything. What do we got in here? A bunch of dye for tie dyeing. Predictable. <laughs> be available today to experience the now. Just mugs with 
reminders, good reminders. There's definitely some beans in here, garbanzos. Got some bamboo toilet paper, because I love my planet. Uh, an inverter that I can't use at the moment. Some sealant, it gets a little, gets rainy, got leaks, gotta take care of it. I got some uh, just mushroom things in here. <laughs> Little statue things. These are cool quilts, quilt things my my grandmother made before she passed away. But I have them in here to remind me uh, to be creative. This one's cool too. She was cool. Thanks for existing, Grandma. <laughs> Ooh, avocado utensils because I love the planet you know classic uh, I usually don't use uh, disposable utensils but my wife bought those got some uh, marijuana paraphernalia <laughs> uh, bottle opener this is a cool little kaleidoscope mushroom I don't know if you can see through that but it's cool <laughs> Yeah, just keep, keep it on. I'll keep it on. I, I don't really have. It's not really that much in here. I told you, keep it minimal. Got an incense. If you have a lighter, we could smell real nice in here, but I, I realize I don't have a lighter before you guys got here. <laughs> oh, classic Jordan. Oh, you got lighters coming from left and right. This is my incense on. Oh, it smells so good already. Ooh, smell that? Ah, that's success. Uh, let's bring it over here. This originally was gonna be like a sink zone, but then I realized I could just go outside mostly. Yeah, can we let light? Here. Oh, it's okay. I was just gonna slide right over. Does it? Do you need more light? Nope. All right. All right. Well, yeah. So like, it comes out in case it gets dirty or you can want to clean it, but I usually just use it as like a a fruit bowl that's full of vegetables and fruits. Uh, but yeah, this is a glimpse inside. This, there's my bathroom. <laughs> a lot of people wonder how I poop. I'm gonna pull that bad boy out for you. This is, this is the question everyone wants the answer to. <laughs> so, we got this pop-up toilet. And then you go over here, and you grab a compostable bag, because I love my planet. And you frickin' just throw it in there. And I like to, you gotta hang your butt off. I like to use the smaller ones because it uses less waste. And I just kinda, kinda poop like that. And that's the bathroom, baby. I have a mason jar I put right here, <laughs> you know, for the for the yellow stuff. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. The mystery, the mystery is over. There you go, world. Well, friggin' gotta have, gotta have a fire extinguisher, everyone. You never know. You never know. Uh, you gotta have. What else you gotta have? This is another essential. You gotta have first aid kit, cause you never know. You might feel good today, but what if you trip and fall, break that ankle, get a big cut, who knows? Gotta wrap it up, gotta seal, seal up that wound. Who knows, man? Got a huge bag of rice, some corn flour. They usually make, make tortillas every morning out on the fire. It's pretty fun and delicious. Um, Creature dominoes. Pretty fun. I don't even know how to play. It's fun to knock over. <laughs> Thanks, Creech. They're the best. They're why I have this house, and I love them so dearly. Oh, man, what else we got? This is fun. 
<laughs> Come over here. This is a. Uh, How should I tell you about this? Uh, you got your, this over your mic. Oh, fuck, sorry, no. I may have brewed my own ayahuasca, but I may not have, but maybe I did. Uh, <laughs> technically, geowasca, if I maybe did that, I don't know. Um, this is some harvested rose hips that um, a girl I was dating gave me, and it's good for, it's got also high bush cranberry uh, that it's good for uh, cramps for ladies. She gave it to my wife. I'm polyamorous, fun fact. And it helps the tummy feel good for the ladies. Um, this is my jacket. I have one. And it has a cool mushroom pin. Keeps me warm. What else we got? Oh, up here, this is the good stuff. This is the, show, this is the uh, Hall of Fame. We got, of course, Christiania. You'll never smoke alone. Gotta have it up. Best place on earth. I love you out there, Christiania. You're the best. My friend Steven painted this for me. He's a sweetheart, Steven Ostrowski. You may have seen him in the Love Letters, Grosso's Last Love Letters. He's really good, does manuals. Um, this is a cool thing my friend Dango drew. It's a sticker. It's like another thing where the physical and astral realm just partying together. We're all on the same page. <laughs> Uh, this is my my late friend Raver. Uh, he passed away, but I made these stickers before he passed away, and he loved them, so got it up. Pretty cool. My friend Sparrow, she's the best. She lives in Albuquerque. She's hanging out with Raver. They're friends. Actually, this is Sparrow right here with my wife, and this is me and Jake DeJula. A lot of people might not know him, but a lot of people will know him. He's the best fucking dude on the planet. Fun fact. If you get a chance to go to Albuquerque and you run into that man, you will be very happy about it. <laughs> I got a Meow Wolf glasses. Meow Wolf is like a art exhibit, interactive art exhibit in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where you like go into like this house and then you like can slide through like the dryer into another dimension or go under the, 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 um, the fireplace and go into another dimension. It's a, like an interdimensional uh, travel agency themed place. It's really fucking cool. Go there if you can. Uh, here's my wife tattooing me, because she does tattoos. She's tattooing some mushrooms on my arm. Predictable stuff. Uh, this is Nice Guys 100% Vegan. My wife works here, and I love it. We might be opening our own, so stay tuned for that, everyone. Some vegan burgers out in SoCal. I got gotcha. you. This is an actual bootleg Grateful Dead sticker from the parking lot that someone got for me. My friend Tim in Albuquerque. I got a lot of friends in Albuquerque. Uh, what is this? Oh, it's not camp, it's not element camp anymore, but it's a, a skate camp, you know, reminiscent of uh, the old vibes. I might have like a skate, no, I don't have a skate wild. Oh wait, let me check behind this. It's getting, it's getting crowded up here. Oh, there it is, the new one. There it is. Forget this patch. Skate wild. If you're a child and you like nature and skateboarding, Google skate wild because <laughs> you'll have a f ton of fun if you hang out with those guys. Um, this, right before I moved into my house, this tiny house, I um, had a pet rat who passed away. And these are the doors from his little house. I thought I'd put them up here like, you know, his little doorway to heaven. He's the best. I got his footprint tattooed right here. My wife did it. These are my other weasels. But yeah. His name's Link. And he's the best. I miss him. But he's still with me. Dry Bones. This is uh, like my friends, me and my friends crew in Arizona. We're a little crazy. We like to party. <laughs> this is the secret tape. He's a, I don't know if you know the secret tape, but if you know the secret tape, He's a guy that has a bunch of old videos, and he uses the secret tape from uh, from Tony Hawk Pro Skater as his little logo. Fun fact, I have a secret tape tattooed on my butt, and you guys have just found it. You found the hidden tape. <laughs> Maybe I should change it to I-double.
not 411. <laughs> yeah. Love you guys. <laughs> this is a freaking, oh, we got a cool scorpion vagina. I don't even know where this came from. But what's cooler than that? <laughs> here's, me and, here's me and the missus. One of my missuses. She's, she's really wonderful. And heck, we got, oh, of course. Maps is the multiple dis the multiple discipline. I'll start over. Maps, multiple disciplinary association for psychedelic studies. It's based out of Santa Cruz, but the reason why there's a psychedelic renaissance happening right now, why the FDA is approving MDMA and psilocybin for therapeutic use, is all beca because of this organization, this nonprofit. Uh, Rick Doblin's the guy who started it, and he's a fucking hero. Thank you, Rick, and look up maps. Could save your life. Psychedelics will save your life. This is a medical conference I went to in Arizona for psychedelic medicine. Uh, it's not really fully legal yet, but there's already conferences happening, and I've been studying psychedelic psychotherapy for the last like three or four years, like informally, going through medical conference, going to medical conferences, going to lectures, and just like. Uh, meeting up with people it's been quite enlightening but yeah psychedelics saved my life and I wanted to understand how and share the gospel with my friends so I'm putting in the work for you guys <laughs> what else we got oh this is what I used to look like I used to just be really drunk all the time and in this kind of outfit it was really fun though <laughs> Not as wild anymore, but maybe in different ways. <laughs> but yeah, look, they made me have two beers in my hands. That's how much. Everyone else was just no drinking. I was the drinker, apparently. What do we got? We got, ooh. You ever been to Moab? You can skate the rocks out there. I took this bad boy out there. It's real fun. New Mexico. The aliens are there. <laughs> I've met them. They're cool. Trust me. They usually come through this portal right here. So every night, actually, you know, depending on where you are. Th these particular aliens come through in New Mexico, but wherever you are, there's going to be some sort of being that's going to come through this realm, into this realm, that's going to give you a lesson that you won't be able to remember. <laughs> and frick, there's got to be something. Oh, I got a freaking... I got a skylight, but I mostly use it for uh, stargazing, because if you're out in the wilderness and there's no light pollution, you can cover the, all the windows, and if you're just looking up here, it's just pure stars, so it feels like you're in a spaceship, and that's why I call it the star pod, and that's the name of this, this, this casa, and I thought I'd paint some, some sort of pattern up here, just kind of saw that, and it, now it's there. My wife made this little star. A uh, little uh, sunroof covers that uh, represents what you see when you take it out. I don't know. Like when I first moved in, we had like a rug that was cut to fit in here because I didn't know what kind of floor I wanted. And but I went with the this black and white checkered board floor to remind you of the good and bad in the world, and you got to live in harmony. You know all that stuff. That's anything that can remind you of that. Is, that's my that's. I like it around. So uh, I put this, this floor in, it's been going well. I might change it soon. But it's, it was uh, quite the experience just moving in to this thing out of a house. I lived in a trailer when I was a little kid. That's kind of like when I was a baby. I like, grew up kind of in a trailer for a while. So it kind of feels like home, like on the road, in a little hut. It was really reminiscent of that when I, when I started my journey, because we like, our lease ended and we just hopped in here and just drove out to the desert, uh, me and my wife. And she's never really camped before, so she really got thrown out into the fucking, into the, into the trenches. <laughs> but luckily we had this hut and she's now she's a camping pro. She's always out in front uh, using this stove. Here, let me show you my stove, because it goes along with the story. Yeah, she, this is the stove we, we use. Uh, you, you, can, you can either put charcoal in, but we usually use, you just find twigs and you put it in here. And then you put your, 
whatever pot and whatever you're cooking right here and it's like a single burner but my wife will make tor tortillas on that every morning get the day started get some rice going get some beans you know we're Hispanic so you know culture <laughs> uh, and I got you yeah, a foam roller this is the outside gym this is it <laughs> it feels nice cracks the old back uh, hell our water supply over here. Got a couple jugs full of water. Got to keep it nice and purified. It's good for the body. Drink lots of water, everyone. You're all drinking not enough. I know you're not. Come on, drink another glass. Go get one. <laughs> and got this cool cactus mirror. Everyone thinks that we made it, but I actually found it at Goodwill. Fits in real nice, right? You know, desert vibes goes with the mountains. I'm pretty hyped on it. Um, yeah, that's a pretty. That's pretty much the gist of the Star Pod Mikasa. I really, really am happy that you guys came and checked this out. Uh, come by again anytime. Love you, I dabble. Uh, we're gonna live forever. What the fuck's in in there? Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> this is my harmonium. I use it for chanting, meditating, writing, med meditating and chanting, chanting music. But it's fucking sweet. Let me, let me give you a little taste. And... gotta have a mushroom guide with you always my friends always this is just a little handheld California one when you're out you know locally getting it done got some other bigger books but this one's good to have in the field there's also some sweet apps you can get like that's a good one I don't know I don't use them but someone told me about them <laughs> Give it a Google. I don't know. Every moment is an opportunity for love and transformation. Thanks for the reminder, Alex Gray. I hope you guys can all remember that. Good stuff. Good Dude, stuff. Seriously. So fucking oh, sick. Okay, cool. This is so <laughs> awesome. Hell yeah. And all the music too. Like, <laughs> really sick. I'm hyped. It's working out. I knew it was. These stickers are trippy, dude. Oh. <laughs> You like that? Why are we worried about going to space? There's so much to do here. <laughs> Her name is Harmony, and she's the best.
skiing without this thing lately. Back and forth. I would normally talk to you so much more, but I just try not to talk. Still got it? faster than the wood, so it should work out great. Here you go, jabronis. Listen to the mob grip. <laughs> I'm so hyped on that. I right, know it's tarper. Oh man, I got nervous because you, Jordan, you're so fucking good at good at filming. <laughs> so you make some, you can make fire with this. It's a little, little kit that uh, Skate Wild gave me actually. Hand drill, the bow, and wrap it around there, and you. It's good stuff. I don't have a mic on anymore. Thank <laughs> you.